Hello everyone, it is Game Day. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another episode of the Rugby League Show. As we reach the business end of the season, the drama in Super League turns up another level. And this week was no different. We had upsets, we had golden point drama, and tries scored left, right and centre. As once again, the picture in the League Leaders Shield race and the playoff race changed once more. Let's get right into the action. We're going to start on Thursday night as heading into the weekend. Fifth place St Helens took on the fourth place Salford Red Devils. Now St Helens had ended their five match winless run by demolishing Hull FC last weekend. They take on a Salford Red Devils side who are looking to make it three wins out of three versus the Saints this season. Here's what happened. Go on. Clark again. Knowles again. A lot of work to do to catch up after his lengthy absence. Out to and by, and now it's wider still, and here goes a race to the corner for Tommy Makinson to score. He's so good, isn't he, Tommy Makinson, whether it's the spectacular in the corner or just a real sheer work and like put your body in a position where you could get a whack. They throw plenty at you, Saints. They've gone down that short side. There's a bit of space there. He knows he's got to come back inside. And plenty of bodies still to try and stop him, but he manages to score the first points for Saints. Ruins. Oliver, Oliver. Go, five. Final play, Clark, five. Dot. Is it off the boot? Yes, it is. Left footed, up in the air. Ryan goes up and juggles and Rickson. T. Rickson. Will be the first try of the season. For the tie flyer, Four. if it's given. Offside. Time off. Right, Jack, that is tackle five. We have no try. But he might be denied. Not right, be slow enough. now on this. Right. It hits T. Richardson's hand and then it hits into Ethan Ryan, who is in front of him. So it's going to be a knock on against Saints. I've made my decision. So still he waits for that first try of the season. It's going to be no try, and it's going to be Salford who get the ball back here. Walks back, kicks it, kicks it well. Probably never in doubt. So Sneed, never in doubt again. Two out of two, four points apiece. St. Helens again, and by, and Sirenan twists away, and on the end of that is Wanda Blake to score just as they did in the first half. St. Helens have claimed an early second half try. They hit the lead again. And Blake looks delighted. Well, Blake scores the try. There's some aggressive defence on the outside from Chris Hankinson, who said it all game out. They're jamming in. They're making the decision to come in and just put a bit of doubt in the ball player's mind. It's Sneed, and Sneed into the bingo area, and Hankinson, has he got enough on that? He's claiming the try, he looks confident. Right, a pause, the, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, pause the ball there. The ball is on the ground, so he needs to have downward pressure on that ball. He's got fingertips on the ball when it is on the ground. I've made my decision. They've all made their judgments, but only one judgment matters. And it is a Salford try, and Hankinson is giving it, literally, literally. If he cuts his nails this morning, he might not have got that. But Salford are back in the game. Wow. Back comes Burns, eventually. Burns, and a short pass, and he's found his man. Joe Batchelor, celebrating his recent return with only his second try of the season. But it's a big one, it's a big one because it puts Saints back in the driving seat. And they're going left, and Miller is going left, and runs into trouble, and runs into a high tackle on the last. It looked like they'd blown the situation, but Saints have given the penalty away. There is mitigation, though. Given the mechanics of the tackle, there is a rapid loss of height, so that brings it down from a red to a yellow. Ten minutes. Ten minutes in the sim bin, with only 12 minutes left to play. Salford have a chance. Sneed's pass. And I think Logan Lewis is in trouble again here in terms Joe, of having Joe, taken Joe, a knock. Joe, 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 Joe. Just leave it. Brad, Brad, Brad. Oliver, Oliver. Uh, Joe Batchelor is furious. 
he's, off, he's, yeah, but he's off the ball. He still can't make high contact. It's, it. it's, for, it's forceful. It's ten minutes in the middle. Oh, it's another somebody. St Helens are I'm down deal with, to uh, 11. Partington as well. For almost the rest of the game. But I Come think Oli Partington might be in Come trouble on. from what we hear from the ref. Right, Callum, I just said to you 30 seconds ago, let me penalise it, let me ref the game. If players run in, they're going to sit down. So that's what's happening to Partington now. He's sitting down. I just well, told you. things up a little bit. Callum! It's Master. 12 against Callum. 11. Come on, Ethan, go. Zero. But it's a zero tackle again. And it's a burst and a barge from Nelly McDonald, who scores a try. And Salford now are within a conversion of drawing this match level again. Well, it's been pretty quiet in this game for me, Nene McDonald, although he still made the most metres. So again, it's a boot of Sneed, but not a drop goal attempt, surely. No, it's not. Just drilling it towards the corner. It's a good kick, but it needs a good chase. For Salford to pin Saints here. Robertson again, spins away. Brilliant stuff from the fullback. Robertson finds a gap. And that is a moment that could change the balance of this game. That's a huge win on player one, but that was a labour chase from Salford. And Wormsley rampaging for two carries and they're within about 40 metres and Makinson can carry that on by another strider too. Burns. Slow play. Wormsley again. Anxious for the heavy labour. Anxious looks from the coaching box. Burns. Short pass. Lees. Now they're in range. Now they have a chance, Mbai's the favourite, Robertson's there as well, back it comes to Mbai, let's fly with the left foot, and it creeps its way over the crossbar, and deep into the memory. What does that mean for St Helens' season? Is this the night that they prove to themselves that they can still have a successful year? They've had to do it the hard way. They've done it for their coach. Salford disappointed, but what a battle and what a finish. Outstanding from both. If so, finish St. Helens 17, Salford Red Devils 16. St. Helens get a little bit of revenge over the Salford Red Devils uh, after having lost them twice this season. Came in golden point extra time. Thanks to a drop goal from Moses and by. And it's really harsh. I'm not just saying this because it's Salford, but it's games like these where you do have to question the presence of Golden Point. Extra time, I get it for a playoff game or for a cup game. It's very obvious. But in this situation where both teams you know, really gave it a go, both teams deserve a point out of that. And I'm not saying it just because it's Salford. I do have that feeling in general. But this game in particular really showed that. Um... Although overall, if you were to pick a winner, you would slightly lean towards St. Helens. Um, Salford, you know, just too many errors uh, on the night. Both sides actually had two Simmons, including three, in just one singular incident. How Morgan Knowles stayed on the field, or I didn't stay on the field, how Morgan Knowles didn't get a red card, I should say, uh, baffles me. It doesn't really baffle me. We're playing St. Helens. That's what happens. But Salford gave it a good fight. Um, really could have won it if they, say, had better decision-making. Um, the reason why Saints won is because they have got a star, star player in their side. And you look at their line and you say, is it Tommy Makinson? Is it Lewis Dodd? Is it Matt Whitley, Daryl Clark? No, Harry Robertson at fullback. The youngster, he's only played, what, half a dozen games now? If that, and already he is a star. He's already a cracking player. He is going to be one of the best players I think we see in Super League. And, you know, you can often put too much pressure on a youngster, but he's already shining. You have a field of so many experienced players, so many top-class players, he's already shining. You know, the sky's the limit for that fella. And while Saints have got him in their side, they will do great things. As for the result itself, it takes St. Helens back up to fourth in Super League. Uh, level on points with Salford Red Devils, who are sixth now. But, of course, Saints have a vastly much better uh, points difference Fourth is probably the max that both St. Helens and Salford can get now, but fourth means a home eliminator. So that race is going to go right down to the wire and it's one that both teams will want to win. 
We move over now to Headingley and two teams who are looking for a strong end to the season for different reasons. The home side, Leeds Rhinos, need a really good end to the season. They have to look to sneak in to them playoff spots. They take on a Wigan Warriors side. Two defeats in their last three games, looking to return to the top of Super League and try and hold on to that league leadership they won last season. Here is what happened. Oh, that's a brilliant pass from Miller. And suddenly Reese Martin's running free. And Miller's carried on in support. And Miller now with a gap, but inside it goes. That is terrific. Absolutely brilliant. Harry Newman on the end of that. But that was that's thrilling. Right from try. where it started, just right to where it ended. Ball, please, We're kept in some suspense now because the video referee's been called into this. This is the best angle to still see the right hand. If we keep going on that, keep going. Pause it there. Thank you. You can clearly see the ball is still in contact with his hand. Thank you. I've now made my decision. Well, Harry Newman is not going to be denied. Leeds are not going to be denied. That was wonderful stuff from them. And confirmation. Stand to. Paul now, Paul. Back on the inside for Miller. Miller sprinting for the corner. Fields there. So is Farrell. But Miller has the beating of them both. And Lee's got a huge try. Referee's going to ask a question. Go back on this nice and slow. You can clearly see the hand, the left arm is on the ball. It remains on the ball all the way down. Pause it there. Thank you. I've now made my decision on the try. Well, we heard the cheers in Headingley. You might just have heard the cheers in East Hall. And there might have been some reverberations in Warrington. Because this is a big moment in the chase for top spot. Smith again, back to field. Field with a short pass. And Semba galloping along. Oh, and Marshall Kirk can pick it up. And instead, it's Fusitura who can bring it free. Now it's with Croft. Croft dancing in and out of Harry Smith. And Marshall gets back to clobbering from behind. But Leeds have got six from here, having repelled the danger at the other end. 60 metres on the counter for the Rhinos. And they're looking left. And Newman, Edgel on his outside. Newman cuts back towards the middle. They're waiting for him. So he bowls it away. Miller now, Frawley. Dummies to a couple. Harry Smith closes his options down. So Frawley goes watch a look, searching the other way. It's all flowing the Rhino's way. Bentley, big right foot step, swings out of one. Akers picks up, goes right, there's the try. McDonald's over. As soon as this ball is on the floor, Liam Marshall can't regather it. Players flooding forward. Brody Croft trying to get rid of Harry Smith, who does a good enough job before Liam Marshall gets there. But a nice shot to the open. A nice, hard, tight line close to the player the ball from the former Wigan player who goes down low and hard. Oh, play ball. Four, three. Four. Taken in by Walters. Back up, Justin. Back. Leaming. Left it comes. Field. And Wardle spins and offers it away. And Liam Marshall will dive in at the corner. Well, Liam Marshall and his fellow left edge attackers have had a couple of opportunities. I think when the break was made by Brodie Croft, it was those two players, Wardle, Liam Marshall, Junior and Semba, they ended up fluffing the lines, but not on that occasion. Exploiting space, riding a tackle, beautiful offload. Paul! Oh, well. Wigan down to 12, again in this game. Leeds finishing on a high. Two. We do have Brad, uh, sorry, Cruz Lehman as an option, but of course he's being... He's been called in at hooker. Crawley with a little chip. Croft's on the chase here. How's the bounce? Good enough for Croft to fall on it. Keep possession. 
Marcus throwing it out. Little kick over the top by Lockie Miller. The leap, but oh, that finishes it. Reese Martin on a day that Leeds might look back on at the end of the year and tell you that was the turning point. A beautiful kick, a nice leap, accurate pass back inside from Momorowski, and he deserves that try. So it finished at heading Leeds Rhinos 30, Wigan Warriors 4, and a result which is it's an upset really, and it, it shows almost a little bit of the fall of the Leeds Rhinos, I suppose, that them beating Wigan's an upset. But when you look at the two teams this season, the two teams over the last few years, the fact that Leeds put in A, such a good performance, and Wigan put in such a poor performance, um, I think shows a lot. Wigan have got problems, but we'll come on to them in just a second. Leeds Rhinos... From a sulphur point of view, and I'm sure it's the same for Cat, and I'm sure it's the same for St Helens, I'm looking over my shoulder at Leeds thinking, they're probably going to get the playoffs. Because right now, under Braille Arthur, he, he sorted that team out. And we knew there was quality in that side. You know, there, there is quality there. They just It just wasn't clicking under Rowan Smith. But Braille Arthur's come in. He's doing a really good job. And I, I do think Leeds could get the playoffs. Who do they overtake, those Saints, Cat and Salford? I just don't know, but this Leeds team now, I feel like it's going to... They could, they could go the rest of the season unbeaten, and, and you know that that is generally the case. Brad Arthur's got them playing some really good stuff. Reese Martin was fantastic with the pivot game, kicking seven uh, goals in that game. Got a try as well. Um, as for Wigan, just the Liam Marsh try, that was all they got. Didn't even convert that. Red card for Harry Smith, which didn't show in the original highlights. So hopefully I can find a clip of that. Um, to put in, or probably it'll be in a YouTube short later down the line. We're going to got some serious problem now uh, in the halves as well. Um, probably have Kieran and Hampshire in there, or maybe Eckersley, but they've got some big problems in there now. So they play Saints next weekend, which is going to be a, a really good game. It's Magic Weekend next weekend, but we'll get on to that later on. But um, yeah, as it sounds, we're going to second in the table, only two points clear of Warrington. They're only second on points difference, mind, but three defeats in four now. It's all just starting to go a little bit wrong for the Warriors. Let's see what happens with them. We head now to Sulgrove Craven Park in the east side of Hull. Hull KR knew that a victory and a Wigan Warriors defeat could send them top of Super League. But we know Wigan have lost, so could Hull KR get the victory against a Castleford side who, whilst they can't get the playoffs, can certainly have a big impact on them. Here's what happened. 10 metres from the line now with Westerman. Westerman out wide to the left-hand side for Miller. Down the line they go. Very, very close. Very, very close, but have Hulkingston Rovers managed to hold up the play here? Time off. The video referee yeah, yeah. has decided he wants to have it's a look at five. this one. OK, so with the live decision of a try, we have insufficient evidence to overturn the live call. I made a decision. Not enough evidence given to overturn this decision, and Alex Meller has opened the scoring. Very, very close indeed. He'll want this played quickly. Mark Parcell, he gets it away quickly for Minchella. Here's Evels. Evels with a back ball out the pass towards Hiku. Petr Hiku over in the corner. But they are really lot trying to throw it around here. In towards Burgess. And Joe Burgess will get the second try of the night for Hulkingston Rovers. Hadley does well, offloads, finding Lewis. Lewis going on one of his trademark runs before a lovely off-road in towards nine levels. And then Gildart, Gildart down to our track and side, back in towards Mikey Lewis. And Mikey Lewis will score. Levels is tackled at the second attempt by Rob, but quickly taken on by Parcel in towards a lovely bit of hands from Hadley. Down the left it goes for Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall into the corner, and he just shoves his way off the defender. Such an unfortunate bounce, wasn't it, from the Castleford kick? I thought they were going to get possession back there, the way it was <laughs> it bouncing. Like it. Meantime, Hiku down to the right-hand side, shrugging off would-be tacklers before eventually Nixon put, lifts him up there and the referee not happy. Joe. And uh, I think Nixon. we could be seeing a card coming out here 
for lifting the legs above the horizontal. He lifts him into a dangerous position Let's and he lands shoulder first. What's said? It's 10 minutes. Yeah, Liam Rush getting out the yellow cards and Nixon oh, Putt will ten, spend 10 minutes in the bin. Dean Hadley, Parcel quickly out to May, back in for Minchella, who is brought down by Westerman, and that may have been offside. I think it was high, Fraser, I think he's just caught him slightly high. Mikey Lewis deciding to go for two points. Ned Castleford with a, showing a bit of resilience. Especially with a player down as well. Yeah, this is not good for KR. Concede a penalty Justin, offside. Someone's going to the bin. Suasso Sue. Yeah. Suasso Sue's give the referee a mouthful and he's gone. Well, there were a few words being had a little bit earlier. Uh, now the captain being called over and Liam, Ma, uh, Liam Rush telling Elliot Minchella to get his troops in order because... So Asso Sue is going to sit down for 10 minutes. Litton wants it quick, running past defenders. Uh, gets a lovely ball off towards Jai Whitbread and quick from Evels again. And that's a great take from Petr Hiku, who's away down the right-hand side. Has he got the legs? He's got support as well. Turns it back in and Schoenberg just gets his second of the night. I think part of the challenge, Volker eyes out. Oh, Burgess in space. They're off again. Burgess down the right-hand side. Get out of the way, he says to Jacob Miller. Back inside to Nile Levels and down the right-hand side. Back, back. Go back. Paul brings it back in towards May and Lewis. Back to May. May goes for it himself. Has he got the ball down? Tyro May drops down to score another try. Yeah, so finished Hull KR 36, Castleford 6. Really good performance by Hull KR that sees them return to the top of Super League. So they look to win the league leaders' shield. Uh, for them, you know, they'll definitely be looking at top two. Top two is priority for Hull KR to avoid the eliminator, get that home semi final, look to head to Old Trafford for the first time. The league leaders' shield. Almost a little bit of a bonus in the way because that's the only difference between coming first and second. They look really good now. Um, it's becoming first in Super League, and should they make the playoffs, I think they'll have a great opportunity to go all the way. Again, another really impressive performance. Uh, Mikey Lewis is just Mikey Lewis. We just come to expect it from him now. Uh, Burgess got two tries. Peter Hickey, Hall, Evelds, May. It's just all the key players for Hull KR getting involved, getting the tries. Real good side, top quality all across the pitch. Um, and yeah, they will cause trouble to anyone they play. And they made a Castleford side just look a bit average when for the last few games, Cas haven't been average, they've been really good. Um, you know, for them, of course, playoffs is not going to happen. They will still have an influence on it with playing other teams and picking up results. But for Hull KR, they could have seen this as a potential banana skin. It's a banana skin that they've avoided. Um, and as I say, they look really, really good. Um, they will be in the playoffs. Can they go on and win them? I don't see why not. We're going to have a look now at two games between sides who are currently sat in the playoff spots versus sides who won't be in the playoffs at the end of the season. At Plough Lane, the London Broncos, fresh off of that win against the Catalan Dragons, look to repeat the trick against the Warrington Wall side, trying to keep tabs with the top two in Super League, but first to the John Smith Stadium and that Castellan Dragon side who are looking to bounce back from that defeat against the London Broncos as they travelled to the Huddersfield Giants. Let's see what happened first at the John Smith Stadium. Go for nice mate. Well, games Sorry, at uh, the John Smith uh, haven't uh, featured that many points. It's Davies. Uh, it's a lovely ball inside yeah, and it's going to be the opening okay. try. Hold! Go on, Eddie made the 10 there, I think. For me, that's one. Barge, Morg, Morg spins it out, and there's more on here. It's another try on here, and it is the aforementioned Tompkins. Hold! Tom Davies at dummy half. Ikavalu waiting close to the play of the ball. Farge, Wallace. Not played that, still five. Wallace finds Farge. Farge, there's half a gap there, a little kick through from Garcia. Yaha! <laughs> 
Lola here, Lola here, left to right pass. Connor, Connor, the space here for Bibi, and Bibi scores. Stand! Go for move to the side, play on. Play on. Milner goes on a scamper. Bousquet makes the stop. There's still 10 metres inside their own half. Milner is hurt in the tackle. Yeah, one sec. There is contact with the edge. It's forceful, dangerous. But there's a mitigating factor that it's low level force. It's a Simbi. It's going to be a yellow card here. It is a yellow card here. It's Simbi. At Huddersfield, the Giants are down by 10. They were down by 14. The chip through. The Gama! Kevin, the Gama! Has galloped onto a kick from Tui Lola here and touched down for mine. See Nagama approaching the ball frame by frame, pausing it there. The ball is grounded in the end goal. I've made my decision. Go Not sure why it's been restarted, but it has. Da Costa, Morg, Morg finds Romano. And the two Arturs combined. King Artur. This time is Navarrete. Romain Navarrete. Da Costa. Two tackles gone in this sequence of six. Farge. Farge and still half a chance for Ikevalu. Ikevalu. Well, he's fallen over the try line, and so we're going to see a video referee decision. Just confirm down in And I think he's given the try. There's no side of the ball from that angle as well. I've exhausted all available angles. Based on the live decision of try, there's insufficient evidence to overturn. I've made my decision. Go five. Tui Lola here. Right to left ball. Kudjo on the bounce. Plays it wide and still they go. Hewitt. Hewitt scored. Read it, Sam. Sam Hewitt scores. That'll be a try. It looked all over when they led 14-0, it looked all over when they led 22-10. But it's not over now, is it? Oh, brilliantly collected by Savellio. Savellio with a super ball. Lola here, celebrating 10 yards out and scores the levelling try. Oh, no. Wallace is knocked down seven or eight no, metres out. Da Costa, Da Costa, Satai on the charge. Satai, a couple of metres short. Hill made the important tackle. Back it goes to Morg. Morg floats one. A drop goal attempted. He's through. Artur Morg. The setting up right here are the Warrington Wolves. Walker out to Crowther. Powell out the back to Dufty. He's the danger man. Dufty to Roderick Ty and he gets the score. Opening try. It was Jared Bassett who just couldn't just couldn't hold his nerve a little bit longer. He had to go in. Play three. Leyland centers it back up against Stock to Campagnolo. They've gone play for play for play. And here's Rock on the outside. Oh, and he's been tipped. It's intercepted. Goodbye. Shut the Ma gate. Marty Aston's away. There is nobody on this field who will catch that man. And it's an intercept try. But once again, it was the overlap created. It was Natoli who just couldn't get the pass away. And he's picked him off. He's not only saved a try there, Matty Ashton. Davis out to Stock. Stock onto Leyland. Leyland out the back to Rock. Now then, Rock is so dangerous. Oh, wow. Wow. Now you could, you could put this down to one or two things and you could take your pick. Poor Warrington defence or a player who has made a statement in Super League. And Josh Rock, he just shows him the dummy and the big right arm fence straight on Sam Powell's chest. Walker, short ball, Vaughan tries to crash through and he, and he does, and he does. Hey, Sam Davis just exposed on his own. And it's really now a, a case of, can Rock at the other end of the field stop? No, he can't. Can't stop the pass for Matty Ashton. And Toby King is the beneficiary underneath the sticks. Matty Ashton just finds a, 
Bit of a lazy defender there, and once he goes through, the gas he's got. But Toby King, what a stellar job he does. A keeping backing up in the middle. Davis again. Opts to go short. Short to Bienick. Here's a big man straight through Bienick. The Lewis Bienick. We nickname him the beef. Missed last week, back this week. Impact off the bench. And there's not many bigger players in Super League. You know, on the front foot, drink water on the back foot, on his own. Broncos again have done the job for five. Can they see out one more? Walker, short side, drink water, short ball. Now then. Done very well the defence there for me. Yeah, Holroyd's over the line. And it's going to go to the video referee. But my first impression was, it's I think, what yours five. was. And that was good well, defence for the London Broncos held up. Yeah, I thought they did it's very, very well. I thought it was Campagnola. So we've got an on-field call of a try. The ball is up. It's still up and it's fighting towards the floor. The tackle hasn't been called complete. It's up at this point, but I then lose sight of the ball at this point. And then I don't get anything else on that. Until the referee calls time off. I've got a decision. And here comes confirmation. Try given. Try given Adam Holroyd. You're right, a conservative set of six. How is it going to end? Short side. Campagnolo dodges one. Ball knocked down. Back to six. Davis isn't hanging around and he gets over for a try. And boy, does he celebrate. An Olympic level dive, that one, to score the try. This is a huge set in terms of the game for both sides. If London can put some points on off this raid into the territory of the Warrington Wolves, then we've got a fascinating last half an hour. Wow, well, Yuko takes on straight through and he is going to score. It's exactly what you said, Kev. Oh, wow, what an offload from the London Broncos in the shape of Reese Kennedy. Yeah, the French internationals. Come on for Sam Davis. But they've got quick play the balls. This time Crowther, again, just off that left foot and in behind the ruck. Last tackle, conservative ta conservative set. Drop the ball, it's a penalty, I'm sure. I think they'll set the two here. He's very lucky there, Jordan Crowther. Right, significant kick here, because as you say, Kev, it takes them into a two-score lead. Drinkwater takes his time. Left foot strike. It's high, but it's through. Danny Walker leading the charge. That'll be a penalty, I'm sure. Aaron Lindot collected him back there. Yeah, I think it was it was Rhys Kennedy who'd hit on suspicion there. The referee's going to wave time off. But there's been a shift, hasn't there, John, now, in terms of Warrington's attack. They're just going through the middle of the field. It's forceful dangerous. It's low-level force, and he's never had the ball. Now, you have made some contact to the head, so that's a sin bin. You're in the bin. And there's confirmation... The ball goes to ground and that will be it. That will be the London Broncos challenge for this afternoon. Unfortunately, they're going to come up short and they're not done. And here's your player of the match. Wow, I tell you, you couldn't be more fitting, could it? The wing-heeled, fleet-footed Matty Ashton has the final say. That goes backwards. We can play on and we'll go back to this. We can play on from this point. Play this through into grounding. We're seeing all I need. Second try for Matty Ashton, and it is a significant one as well, because not only does it seal the result, it is Matty Ashton's 100th career try. So finished in Huddersfield, Huddersfield Giants 22, Catalan Dragons 23. Uh, this one didn't go to goal point extra time. This was Arthur Morg, uh, a few minutes before time, kicking the drop goal, getting Catalan. What is a it's a precious two points. It doesn't matter how the two points come along at this point in the season. It's just important that you get them. A real close game throughout. Uh, Sam Tonkins back in the side, influential as ever. The one point I do look at for the Catalan Dragons and something that didn't cost them, they got away with it today, it's their kicking. They scored five tries and Artemorg only converted one. That could have cost them. Um, Huddersfield Giants kicked three out of four. If Huddersfield Giants had gone four out of four, they would have won this game. So, 
they've got away with it there, but it's something that they need to improve. Why they lost to London last week, because they didn't convert both their tries, and it nearly cost them again. So that's the one little downside I think Catalan need to improve on. They currently sit fifth, sandwiched in between Saints and Salford. Um, they, again, will they win the playoffs? You don't know, you're looking at fourth, fifth, and sixth now. Saints, Catalan, and Salford. All three of them teams will be looking at fourth. They'll also be looking at their shoulder at Leeds Rhino side, just four points behind, chasing them down. And when you look at the Rhinos fixtures coming up, they've got Warrington at Magic, then they play Catalan. So, you know, for Catalan, they've got to play Leeds Rhinos, and should they lose that game, that could be catastrophic for their playoff hopes. Quick word on the Huddersfield Giants. Um, good performance against a good side like the Catalan Dragons, but of course, it's just next season for them now. Build towards next season, get a cool squad, get a good head coach in, and try to attack their playoffs in 2025. The other game you saw there was London Broncos 22, Warrington Wolves 36. Uh, and actually, a good performance by London. Yesterday, they lost the game. They lost both halves, so 22-10 down at half time, and they lost the second half, 14-12, if you want to look at it like that. But 22 points against the Warrington side. It, it was a good performance, to be honest. I, I saw a lot of... Uh, Prediction saying Warrington will win this, you know, by 50 points, 60 points, you know, big, big scores, and it's nothing on Warrington. Warrington played well; they did what they had to do. Um, we will speak about the kicking from Castland. The Warrington kick was much better. Josh Drinkwater kicking six out of seven, so yeah, he did really well there. Matty Ashton with a couple of tries. Um, but yeah, London Arsenal bottom of the Super League, but it's another positive performance. Um, of course, they should just enjoy the final few games they've got in Super League before they return to the Championship next season but yes the Warrington Wolves they are now two points behind the top two uh, after another victory it's all they've got to do now you know the, at this stage of the season with six games to go the performances just don't matter really they matter a little bit and they'll matter when you get to the playoffs I suppose but at this stage just get the results get the two points and try to finish as high up that lead table as possible top two for them is still a very realistic aim when you look at some of their fixtures for the rest of the season. Leeds, Cass, Lee, um, you know, Huddersfield, London again. They've got St. Helens in there as well. It's a favourable fixture schedule actually for the Warrington Wolves. So they will really fancy their chances in getting into that top two. Uh, but either way, they will be in the playoffs. Can they win the grand final for the first time ever? We head now to the final game. Uh, from this weekend, and it was at the Lee Sports Village. Lee, of course, lost to the Wigan Warriors midweek, which severely dented their playoff hopes. They knew that a win against Hullersea would take them within five points of the playoff spots and keep their faint playoff hopes alive. Hullersea, well, their playoff dream ended ages ago. But could they pick up their first away win of the season? Here's what happened. 15 minutes played. But what a chance as Penne strike down. And it's another penalty, and that, for the persistent offending, will mean that Hull FC get a yellow card. Will Gardner, Sinbind. So Epape waiting, spun to Asiata. It's a poor pass, gone backwards, the referee says. And now there's suddenly a gap right down the middle for O'Donnell to go shooting through. The referee's going to ask a question here. But Hull's defence just parted momentarily. Try on the field. Let's hear from the video referee. Touched by Asiata and goes backwards. So we're going to play on from this point. He's picked up cleanly by Penny and passed. Again, he's picked up by O'Donnell. Okay, then we're going to go to the grounding. I'm just going to watch this full speed to confirm that there is no double movement. Yeah. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, analysis complete. This is going to be a try. It's going to be Kai O'Donnell's seventh try of the season. Ipape stands and waits. Back to Asiata again. Still it's still the, the sixth tackle coming up the next, but Holder striding through. Well, they had to break at some point. From all the pressure that Hull have had on their own line, defending, taking an awful lot of energy out of them. This is Bamforth. 
Because we're rolling out there, he's a barrel tight player and a great offload to Tim Abarby. And Tim Abarby's got Briscoe up there for company as well. But he's going to turn right and look for more support. And Logan Moy, thrilling stuff from Hull FC. If they would have picked that first try earlier, well, the scores could have been locked up if the ball goes over here. But good play. And Logan Moy just gets on the back of the pass from Carlos to Mavavi. Briscoe with a step and the offload. And Martin comes searching back down the middle. And Lewis Martin is going to be held up on tackle one. Only 30 yards on. And as soon as the legs go through the perpendicular, it has to be a penalty. So Hull FC get another chance to build. I think it'd be 10 minutes maybe in the bin. Oh, well, the whole fans making their voices heard when they saw that on the replay. Everything's just held up at the moment. The referee's not allowing play on. Well, he's he's going to bring out Darnell McIntosh here, I think. Now, not only do you put him into a dangerous position, you then drive him onto his shoulder. It's 10 minutes in the bin. 10 minutes in the sim bin. Bamforth again. This is Charles. Little double pump. Walker throws it wide. And a twist and a search for the line by Harvey Barron. You love it. You love to see the confidence of this side. Well, there's a bit of anxiety to the whole defence. There's a bit of excitement to Lee's attack here. Ipape across. Lamb puts the kick for the chase by O'Donnell. And there's the try. There's the try that lifts the mood at the Lee Sports Village. Always in possession. Grounds the ball. I've made my decision. Well, the referee's made his decision, and I think this is going to uh, be greeted with a, an eruption of noise. That's right, eventually dealt with. Ipepe, Lamb again, and here comes O'Donnell, who's on a hat-trick, but just turns it away for Hardacre for a simple finish. Fullback's got to go from him. And he goes from Logan Moore, unfortunately can't quite affect the tackle. Go, play on! Asiata, Lamb pops it over the top and into the hands of Darnell McIntosh and that surely now wins it for Lee. And quality play, nice setup from Aaron Pernet. And you just look at all the players flooding forward here. Carlos! Carlos, get off the ball! This will be the last play. Five. Lamb again, and the left-footed jab picked up superbly. And there's a the hat-trick. Referee points the finger. And that's game, set, and match, surely now. Well, that hat-trick does owe a little bit to luck as well, didn't it? Because clear deflection on the way through. Four. Stay here, Jack. Go for Davis again picks up and goes left. Asiata with a ball. Lamb, short pass. Trying to bully their way over. And they have got over. Referee has a look and points the finger. And again, the man supplying him with that ball is his half back partner, Lachlan and Lamb. Smith puts the kick up in the air. Briscoe's underneath it. What a catch that is. And what a clearing run this is as well. Brilliant stuff, absolutely brilliant stuff. Haggy might go the distance here. He's been chased hard back by Martin. Well, that was superb from McIntosh. That from Hanley. Up and away. Well, big effort from McIntosh, but big effort as well from Lewis Martin. Hardacre. A hardacre, well, some tired defending. And Zach Hardacre is given one on the plate. And Zach Hardacre, well, he scores the try. But it was a great take in the year from Daniel McIntosh. Brilliant play, but I'm also going to credit Lewis Martin as well. As soon as he gets through, you're thinking he's going to score the try, Daniel McIntosh. Lewis Martin comes from nowhere to stop the try. That's why you have a bit of belief, a bit of pride in your performance. They do that. But at the end of the set, Zach Hardick gets the ball. It's a finish at the Lee Sports Village. Lee 42, Hull FC 12. Real strange game in this. The first half, uh, Lee played really well. 
A um, couple quick Hull FC tries, they made it 12-12 at half time, and you're thinking, okay, you know, Hull FC can keep playing well second half. We could be in for a real close game here, you know, real tight affair between two, you know, on their on their day, real good sides. But um, in the end, second half, Lee, 30 unanswered points. Kai O'Donnell with four tries. Uh, Zach Hardacre with two. Frankie Hulse and Darren McIntosh uh, with tries as well. McIntosh kicked three. Hardacre kicked two. Just second half, Lee were just unbelievable. Um, you know, they're brilliant best. Lachlan Lamb, he can just he can just pick a pass out anyway, can't he? And it keeps their playoff chances alive. And I've always tooted the Lee playoff bell. At the end of the day, if Leeds are in the playoff race, Leeds, so are Lee. Uh, that's, that's never going to get confused at all, is it? Leeds and Lee. And if you look at Lee's fixtures, Sovereign are doubles at Magic. Mm, yeah, I think that could go either way, that game. Then they've got the London Broncos. You'd expect to win there. Warrington Wolves will be tricky, but then it's Castleford and two big home games against Tel KR and St Helens. But at home, you do sort of fancy Lee. Could be anyone in Super League. So their playoff dream isn't over yet. They, they, they probably can't afford any more slip ups, so they probably have to, have to win all six games if they want to end up. In the playoffs, but they put in performances like they did in that second half, and like Guy O'Donnell did getting four tries, then yeah, they've got a real good chance of making the playoffs. Yes, I mentioned it already, but next weekend is Magic Weekend, it is taking place at Ellen Road. Um, I don't think it should take place at a place like Ellen Road, I really think there's a, the opportunity there to play. You know, before it was played at Newcastle, before there was a real good opportunity. Sort of could take it to an expansion place or somewhere not with a Super League team. So he took it to the city with one of the best support rugby league teams uh, in the country. But um, hey ho, there's nothing I can do about that. All I can do is look at the fixtures that are coming up. So Saturday's fixtures then. You've got Hull FC versus the London Broncos. Um, this is going to be a really good game. Um, of course, Hull FC beat in London once. London bring in Hull once. Um, that was both when they were at home, so it's a neutral venue. I think this is going to be a real good game. Yes, it's not two teams in the playoff fight, but I just think from a neutral point of view, this could be a real interesting game. But then, then after that, I mean, if it wasn't called Super Saturday, it should be, because this is a Super Saturday. You've got a real enticing game between Hallas and London, and then two heavy hitters of games. Wigan Warriors versus St. Helens. In what might be one of the biggest games... In terms of how this season's going to pan out for a long while, probably since they played each other in the 2020 Grand Final, and I say that because Saints are not guaranteed a playoff spot. They're only four points ahead of Leeds. Leeds will play late one in the evening. We'll get to that in a second. So they will. They will. They need a victory to get themselves into the playoffs. Wigan, meanwhile, they will be in the playoffs. There's a distinct chance that Wigan don't finish in the top two. If they lose to Saints here, four defeats in five. Not only might they finish not finish in the top two, but they have the chance of going into the playoffs in a horrid run of form, which we do not want whatsoever. So, yeah, this is an absolute big game in terms of both team seasons and any game between Wigan Saints. It's just a big game in general. And then, just another absolutely incredible game after that, Warrington Wolves versus Leeds Rhinos. I mean, what would what you say? Basically, you've got the four biggest teams in Super League taking up the, the two even slots. Uh, on this Super Saturday. Warrington Wolves, of course, are chasing down that top two. They'll know how, what Wigan have done. Should Wigan lose and Warrington win, Warrington will go into that top two. Leeds, well, they have, you'd expect, a sizable crowd behind them, being it is in Leeds. Not ahead in Leeds, but it is still in Leeds. Of course, at Ellen Road, home um, of Leeds United. So, both teams will be wanting a victory. Leeds probably need the victory more. So, again, you're expecting three games there, three tight games and high scoring and just really entertaining games. You move on to Sunday then, and it's still another fantastic day of Super League. Yes, it's not quite Super Saturday, but it's still another real good day of Super League. You've got a game which is almost one of the newer rivalries you start to see in Super League as the Lee Leopards take on the Salford Red Devils. These games are always great to watch. Um, I watched my first ever Salford game uh, at the Lee Sports Village uh, when Salford won 20 points at 10. And as I say, these wars just high scoring, really entertaining games. Uh, both teams have got what one win in this fixture so far. Salford won at home, Lee won when they were at home. So a uh, neutral venue again should be really good. Salford will need a win to keep the playoff or stay in their playoffs. Lee, we feel if they lose this one, their playoff dream will be over. Uh, the game at three o'clock is two more teams sat in the playoff spots. 
uh, once which is sat top of the table in Hull KO. They take on the Catalan Dragons. Again, should be another good game. Catalan, I believe, won the game at Craven Park uh, in Golden Point and beat them at Estancia with Bruta. So Hull KR will know that. We'll know that it's going to take a lot to get the victory. Again, Catalan needed to try to keep that gap between themselves and Leeds in 7th and try getting to that 4th spot. Hull KR will want to try to stay top of Super League. And the final game of Magic Weekend sees Huddersfield Giants take on the Castleford Tigers. Yes, neither of these sides can make the playoffs, but Yorkshire Derby in Yorkshire is sure to be a feisty and very entertaining fixture. Indeed, six fixtures, two days. Magic Weekend looks like it's going to be an absolute thriller. So it's time now to have a look at the Women's Super League. Uh, there's no fixtures this upcoming weekend, so we'll just look at the latest results. Leeds Rhinos 28, Wigan Warriors 8, Barrow Raiders 32, Warrington Wolves 14, St Helens 56, Ferriston Rovers 6, and York Vale 3, 48, Hustle Giants 10. Time now to have a look uh, once again at the Wheelchair Super League. Three results to go through, Wigan Warriors 48, London Roosters 34, Hull FC 32, Leeds Rhinos 44, and Leeds Rhinos 56, Halifax Panthers 54. A uh, couple fixtures this weekend, Wigan Warriors versus Hull FC, and the Halifax Panthers take on the London Roosters. Upcoming championship fixtures then, Sheffield Eagles versus Bately Bulldogs, Toulouse versus York Knights, Bradford Bulls versus Thurston Rovers, Jewsby Rams vs Barrow Raiders, Swinton Lions vs Halifax Panthers, Wakefield Trinity vs Widnes Vikings, and Whitehaven vs Doncaster. Time to have a look now at the RFL Championship, uh, starting off with the results from the last weekend. Uh, Wakefield Trinity 42, Sheffield Eagles 6, Doncaster 20, Toulouse 18, Bately Bulldogs 26, Swinton Lions 6, Bradford Bulls 58, Whitehaven 0. Uh, the situation at Whitehaven is not very good at the minute. They're having some financial difficulties. Hopefully they can get through that. Uh, Halifax Panthers 38, Barrow Raiders 12, Witness Vikings 0, Featherston 8, and York Knights 54, Jewsby Rams 12. RFL League 1 now, Cornwall 26, Hunslet 33. Uh, Midlands Hurricanes 34, Workington 22, North Wales Crusaders 16, Keely Hughes 24, and Oldham 84, Newcastle 0. Upcoming fixtures in League 1, Cornwall vs Midlands Hurricanes, Hunslet vs North Wales Crusaders, Keely Cougars vs Oldham, and Newcastle vs Rochdale. Conference Premier Division, uh, Lock Lane 34, Hunslet 32, Heworth 16, or West Browning 24, Rochdale Mayfield 50, Kells 16, Siddle 106, Ergmont Rangers 0, Frasso Heath Crusaders 28, West Hull 28, and York Acorn 6, Wacker Hornets 24. Upcoming fixtures in the Premier Division, Hunslet vs Ergmont Rangers, Siddle vs Heworth, Rafa Hornets vs Fratto Heath Crusaders, West Browning vs Lock Lane, West Hull vs Kells, and York Acorn vs Rochdale Mayfield. Conference Division 1, not too many games to go through here. Uh, Clockface Miners 22, Drewsmore 18, and Wollstone Rovers 24, Crossfields 40, with the only two scores from the weekend. And five upcoming fixtures Clockface Miners vs Inserose Bridge. Dewsby Moore vs Stanningley, Hull Dockers vs Wigginson Patricks, Lee Minus Rangers vs Waterhead Warriors, and Skirlaw vs Alton Raiders. Finally, National Conference Division 2, uh, Dewsbury Celtic 44, Ellenborough Rangers 18, Millam 16, Barrow Island 18, Myson Warriors 38, Pilkington Rex 18, Shawcross Sharks 22, Olms and Ants 14. Fornhill Trojans 16, Saddleworth Rangers 14, and St. Jude's 48, Normanton Knights 12. Upcoming fixtures in the Division 2, Barrow Island vs. Wigan St. Jude's, Edinburgh Rangers vs. Mighty Warriors, Normanton Knights 
versus the 4 0 Trojans, Olms and Ans versus Jewsby Celtic, Pilkins and Rex versus Shawcross Sharks, and Saddle Rangers versus Millam. And so we have come to the end of another episode of the Rugby League Show. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below to let me know how your team is getting on. But once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon for another episode of the Rugby League Show. Goodbye. <laughs>